uh, in this class of the tutorial, we're going to use uh, the Parkits plugin to produce a geodesic dome, as you can see here, and then use the Weaver web plugin to give it some thickness. And I'm going to also explain how we, we can use the Weaver web plugin to produce different patterns of the geodesic dome. So you can see that this is uh, the base one, and then we're going to use different patterns from the Weaver web plugin to model this from scratch. I'm going to explain them. Uh, step by step so you can uh, model them in grasshopper be sure to watch the video till the end because we we're going to model all of these four uh, step by step uh, before we start remember to subscribe to our channel and welcome to parametric house if you're new to grasshopper uh, you can watch off this playlist which is related to grasshopper why you have to learn grasshopper uh, what is parametric designing grasshopper and also a one hour beginner tutorial and also if you want to learn more about grasshopper uh, advanced tutorials longer tutorials you can watch out uh, the uh, course lessons and enroll in our course uh, from our website uh, let's get started from scratch uh, first of all what we have to do is to install the parkit plugin uh, we're going to put that in our website so you can download that you can also download this from foodforrhino.com so after you install this, you can see in the primitive, we have the geodesic dome. And it's really simple. What we have to do is to put it here. I'm going to put the bifocals plugin so you can see it. And because my mesh edges is off, you can just hit control M or go to the display and hit this uh, preview mesh edges to check it out. Uh, okay. As you can see, we have the base point. The base point is just a point. So I'm going to just set this to a point. If you want to move this here, uh, the radius is just a number for the radius. Let's just give this a number. We increase that. And the dome frequency is a number. We can start from zero and maybe maximum for two. For zero, you can see that this is, let's just, zoom in the base one and then we can increase it by one and two so i'm going to go to the zero and turn everything off okay uh, the outputs we need here the first one is the mesh so if i just go to the params menu the first menu here and select the mesh one and connect it to here just turn it off you can see that this is the base mesh uh, the geodesic dome mesh. If you want a base mesh, which is explained here as unprojected subdivided mesh, it's going to be, to be a smaller mesh inside. It's like that. And then you can also have the points if you want to, and the edges. You can connect the curve, you can have the edges, the points, and the mesh. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can use Viva to just convert this into something really cool. So let's just go install the Viva You can install that also from our website, uh, get the download links. And what we have to do is to go here and select this two tools. Uh, this is going to give you some frame and window possibilities with meshes. So just use this one, which is the Viva picture frame to give it to the mesh. And turn this off. And now we can give this a distance. So I'm going to give this a number slider to maybe 12.5. Just control the number slider and increase this thickness. And you can also just right click in the insert type and use the uh, parallelogram, for example. But this one, you have to give this a smaller number. So maybe 0.25% is better and check which one is better for you. But remember, if you're using the uh, parallelogram, uh, when you want to make the mesh window and give the mesh here, uh, put that also as the second one. So what I want to do is to extract this insert type. Uh, I think that doesn't let us to extract it. So it's like a one, uh, just simply give this a one and put it to the same one and give the distance the same number to the distance of the window so it's going to make the frame and the windows 
possible. That's really easy. And then we can just play with these numbers. Just keep that maximum like two or three. And how about like this? Okay. The next part is that we can use the Viverbird mesh thicken to give this a thickness maybe to the frame. I'm going to give it to here. A little bit too much, maybe 2.2. To give it to here and if you want to you can see uh, when I increase that it's going to go inside so I'm going to go to the distance expression and minus 6 bring it outside if you want and, make it. and to make it clear let's just go to the display and select this one a custom preview to the thickness and a custom preview to the windows. Turn everything off and let's give them two different colors. I usually use swatch SWAT. For example, maybe this is going to be the black one and this one. Uh, bluish with some transparency okay that's fine uh, you can see that you can increase the thickness remember that and also the borders controlled here we'll have this here if we increase the frequency uh, it's going to make that uh, with more faces for the geodesic dome uh, the next part which i want to explain here uh, is that you can also make this smooth. So if you want to, you can go to the Viva plugin and use this uh, Catmull Clark subdivision. We also used that before. Uh, let's use it. If you want to give it to the thickness one from here and then give it to the output, let's just turn this off. You can see that it has a level. So it's like 0, 1, 2, 3 maximum. So it's like 0, 2, 3. 0 is going to give that as the same as the geodesic dome then you can just smooth that more and more to three you can see it's like hitting the control m okay i've just made a file uh, you can see that it's a smooth one simply by doing that we have to also use this uh, catmull clark for the windows so i'm going to give that to the mesh of windows remember and then give that to the windows, you will have something like that. Or if you want to just turn off the transparency and have it like this. Like this. Okay, the next pattern I want to explain and talk about is to go and play with this with the subdivide section. Uh, the first one is this constant quad split. That's really cool. I'm going to use that the good thing is that we can bring it before here and the geodesic dome is going to go to the mesh and then this one is going to go to the output. You can see it like here. And then again it has a level so we can just put it to like 0 to 2. 0 is going to have, have the base then we can increase it to 1 and have it like that. And decrease the borders. And increase or decrease the thickness and then we can smooth it if we want to like that uh, you can also put this cat more clark before the thickness so for example uh, let me just delete this one smooth the windows and then the smoothness goes to the thickness use this for the level here. Then give it to the custom preview. The only thing that I wanted to explain is that you can uh, smooth the, the frames and then give that a thickness or uh, give it a thickness then smooth it. You can see that this is also giving better results and those windows are seamless, they are connected to the mesh and it has a better result. So I guess that this is a better one. Let's just give that here. So remember that for that one, which we want to give the thickness, uh, we can do it before the thickness and then 
smooth it and then give it a twist of thickness. Okay, just put it to zero, see the base. That's really beautiful. So that's the second pattern you can use by just simply using this constant quads split subdivision. Okay, the next one which I want to explain here is the mid edge subdivision. You can also use this one. Let's just delete this one. Okay, the problem here is that this one is giving us a polyline curve and the output is like a polyline. So you don't need have you don't need this mesh thing. You can just give that to the frames and the windows, and you can see that you will have this beautiful pattern, which is the third pattern you can use, and then give it a thickness like that. So remember, if you use this mid-edge subdivision from the output of the geodesic dome, it's going to give you polylines, you don't need a mesh, and then you can give that to the mesh polylines of the frame and the windows. So that uh, that's the third one. The last pattern which I want to explain here is to go and use this beautiful tool from the extract, which is here. Let's just explain that duals graph. Okay, the dual graph is really beautiful. The base thing is that, let's just turn on the geodesic dome, control M. Okay, for example, assume that we have these uh, faces. If we connect the center to the mid edge for example for this one and another one for this one this is going to be the last pattern it's going to give you some uh, hexagon patterns on it so you can use this dual graph connect it to the dome turn it off and you will have this something like a buckyball i guess and uh, then you can give it again to the polylines okay uh the mm, and you can have that frame like thing like this the thickness i think it's going inside so i'm going to give that minus x outside the expression and bring it out and you can see how easy it is to use this one to convert it into a ball. Again, if you want to make it smooth one, you can just increase that and make it like that. That's also beautiful. Control M to just turn off the edges and you will have a ball like that. And then if you want to just put it to zero, uh, you will have dual graph, which will give you hexagons and pentagons like this, a ball. Uh, okay, I guess that this tutorial will be helpful if you want to just use this a geodesic dome from the Parkits plugin, which you can download from our website and the Fruit for Rhino website, and then use the Viverot plugin to produce some patterns on this and use it. You can also uh, split this if you want the mesh. The, maybe let me just tell you for a simple one right click on the perspective, use this clipping plane, draw a clipping plane, and turn this like 180 degrees something like that. We can just bring it up and down to see what happens if we want to split it and then split that mesh and use it for your project. Maybe you want the dome and something like that. So remember, you can always also split that mesh uh, to work with the leftover of that mesh and use it in your project. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was useful. Uh, if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Bye.